we'll get started. Okay. Okay, so the presenters for tonight is me, Arnie Stevenson, one of the product program specialists. We'll have Angela on the line also. She's the VP of membership development. And then we'll also have Kathy on the line. She's the rep from ABC Baker. Okay, so just some instructions for the HD meetings. Um, you'll use the chat box to ask questions or let us know, obviously, if there are audio issues, but everyone says that they can hear. So you'll use the chat box to ask questions. Um, I would prefer if you wait towards the end of the presentation because we might answer your question during the presentation and we have time for questions at the end. Um, also, remember that participants are all muted just to reduce audio issues, so it just makes it easier so, no, we're not hearing any background from anyone else. Okay, so we'll get started and I'll hand it off to you. Good evening, everyone. We're going to run through the next few slides and discuss the cookie sale results. So, as you can see this year, we had a little over 12,000 girls selling, 1,351 troops selling, and 2.2 million um, packages sold, which equates to 189,000 cases sold. As you can see, that represents, in terms of girls selling, a 5.8% decrease in girls. So along with this slide, we have a little poll that we want you guys to take because we wanted to know why didn't why do you think girls didn't participate in the 2018 um, cookie program? So I will launch that poll and then I'll give you guys some time to answer. And then make sure after when you choose your choice, you submit your answer. Okay, and I'll just give 30 more seconds for the other half of the people to respond. Okay, so I see I have 12 people who voted, so I'm not sure why it's not coming up for other people. But um, hold on, it's out in the poll. And can you see the results? Yes. Okay, so I just shared the results from the poll. Um, so we asked the question, why didn't girls participate in the 2018 cookie program? So 33% um, of you said inclement weather, 8% um, said participation is not a council requirement, 8% said made troop funds through other money earning activities, and then 50% said none of the above. So, and like I said, please note that I'll be sharing this. I'm not sure why it's not coming up. Someone said click on the view options at the top of the screen. So maybe that's why some people can't see it. Okay, and whoever chose none of the above as the reason why girls didn't participate in the 2018 cookie program, can you write in the chat the reason why? So even if you didn't see the poll, you can still give me an answer as to what you think as to why they didn't participate. So I'll give you guys. Okay, Peggy, um, but so I'll just read the question to you, Peggy. So it says, why didn't girls participate in the 2018 cookie program? If you have um, an answer for that, you can just add that answer into it and just let us know your thoughts. We just want to get your guys' thoughts on things. You don't have to actually participate. We just want your thoughts. 
So let's see, I see Nikki says the time commitment. Yes, in the chat box, Peggy, yes. So I see as none of the above people said the time commitment. Let's see who else, if anyone has anything else. Okay, so Renee says less girls participating as a whole. Also, some younger troops are afraid of sales. Let's see. We have fewer girls not participate. The low price per box profit considering the amount of time put in. We had a troop just take a break. The girls weren't interested. The time of year is bad, too cold, short daylight hours. And then parents not wanting to help out. Okay, so we just want it, and we'll actually we'll be saving the chat also, so we know what you guys thought of it. We just figured, hey, let's get you guys um, your opinion on it because we don't really know. So, okay, all right. So I will exit out of that, and you can continue. So in terms of showing the difference in our membership and girls selling, as everyone can see from 2015, our overall council girl membership has decreased by 8.5% and the number of girls selling has decreased by 18% from 2015 to 2018. So you can see that while membership has only changed and decreased by 8.5%, we have a much bigger drop in the number of girls selling, which is why, you know, we're asking the questions of, well, why aren't girls participating to try to get to the root of what some of those issues may be and things that we need to consider um, going forward. The whole purpose of the program is to promote entrepreneurship, oh, sorry, entrepreneurship and financial literacy. So, you know, we'll be looking towards trying to get back to really the overall goal, which is to give girls a leadership experience through the cookie sale. In terms of the sales performance, it still remains pretty strong. As you can see from packages sold, you know, we've pretty much increased. We've gone up and down a little bit. Um, 2016 was a pretty, all the years, 2015 to 2018, were pretty decent years. Um, however, in comparison from 2015 to 2018, there was a slight decrease, but the per girl average continue to increase, but it plateaued this year. So girls, in spite of the fact that there were fewer girls selling, continue to sell well and reach their goals and really outperform. Um, this year, our per girl average was flat, which means that in order to have an increased sale, we would have needed more girls selling, which we did not have. Now, this is what the overall mix was for the sale. I know there was a lot of conversation about, oh, the s'mores did not do as well as last year, but that is actually the same percentage of s'mores that we had last year. So when we think of, okay, well, why did so many people have a lot of s'mores? I think primarily we probably all overestimated based on some of the issues that we had last year and therefore basically um, had more cookies, had more s'mores in our inventory. But overall, troops and girls sold the same amount of s'mores as they did last year. It's just that each troop and on a council level, we had more inventory of s'mores. And I think 
It was the pain point of we don't, we want to make sure we don't run out. If the demand is as strong, we just don't want to run out. Um, but, you know, as always, the Thin Mints were the number one thing, the Carmel Delights, um, the number two. But when you look at the three unique items that are sold through ABC, the lemons, the thanks a lots, and the s'mores, that equals 28%. So almost a third of our sale, which means that those are very strong performers in our eight or nine product mix. Okay, so this is our niece and I'm going to take over. So the top five service units, and this is by total packages. So we have Timber Creek coming in at number one, then Watonga, Five Star, Cherry Hill, and Echo Wood. So, Congratulations, guys. And then the top five service units with their per girl average. So we have Watonga coming in at number one for 374 was your per girl average. That's awesome. Um, number two, we have Lenape Pines. Number three, UPTM. Then Rancocas Valley. And then Cape May County. So congratulations. Okay, so next we have the top 10 cookie sellers. So number one, we have Mahaya, who sold 3,420 packages from South Brunswick. And then the next three winners, well, the next three top people are all from Five Star. So congratulations. We have Danielle, Lisa, and then Alicia Moore. Um, next, we have Emma Tomlin from Inland Island, Addison from Watonga, Toriana from Echo Woods, Alexandra from East Brunswick, Mackenzie from Cape May, and then Josephine from Watonga. So congratulations. Um, just also to let you know, I did send all those parents an email because the top 10 sellers from the cookie cell and then from the fall product program cell will be invited to the Girl Achievement Award ceremony. So they should have received an email already with the invitations, but they'll also receive a postcard in the mail. Um, I believe that I believe the ceremony is like towards mid-May or in May, I'm not sure, but I know it is in May. So congratulations to those girls. Okay, it's May 20th. Thank you, Lori. Okay, so the training stats of the 57 service unit. So for the service unit, um, cookie managers, we had 31 service units attend the in-person training, and then 26 complete the webinar training. So during cookie training, we had a training in East Brunswick, and then one in Cherry Hill, and then we just did a webinar. Um, for the booth coordinators, we only did webinar training. So 51 service units completed the webinar training. Um, one service unit didn't one service unit did not complete either training, and then five service units did not have a um, booth coordinator. Okay, so now we'll get to the incentives. So the buy five program. So this year we only had um, 4,600 entries into the buy five program. Um, compared to last year we, when we had 6,800 entries. So that was totaling about um, 23,000 packages sold. Uh, when it comes to the buy five winners, here are the winners. So we have Susan from Majesty, Helen from Harmony, Alan from South Brunswick, Jenny from, from, look, from Monroe, and then Tyler from Timber Creek. Um, all of these winners they're, they have already received their cookies. I shipped them out on April 17th to them. So they're all happy with their cookies. Okay, and the 10% incentive growth. So this year we had 70% of our troops re receive the um, two volunteer tote bags. So that's 942 troops. Oops, skip one. Okay. So this is um, so this year for our cookie share, we made our goal. So our goal was to um, have 2,400 cases donated to the military, but this year we did 2,513 cases. So thank you guys and congratulations. The cookie activity pen. So the cookie activity pen. This pen is an award earned by. Completing activities outlined in the cookie cell activity guide published by GSUSA. 
So this year we had 1,481 cookie activity pins were purchased through Juliet's Closet as of April 13th, 2018. Next, we have the Cookie Pro Contest. So I found that this, this contest was so cool for GSUSA to offer this year. So basically, girls can um, fill out an application, and then I, I'm not sure exactly what all they need to give to GSUSA, but it's for a chance to be featured on a cookie box next year. So as you can see, I circled that we had 255 entries into the contest. And there's already been a total of 17,380 scouts who've entered this contest. Mm -hmm. So if you have girls that you're thinking of that might be interested in that, um, and I think they would because the girls really love our top seller photo shoot, so why not be on the box of cookies? Um, just know that they're still accepting applications until Monday, April 30th. So you can visit girlscouts.org slash cookie pro in order to um, register, apply for the contest. Okay, so the cookie booth contest. So that's the picture of the dog tag. I'm so excited about it. Um, the reason it's taken a while is because we're getting it custom made. So that takes a little while. Um, so we have 42 troops this year participate in the cookie share booth contest. We pick five troops that are our winners and troops will receive the cookie share dog tag after May 10th. So like I said, since it's custom made, and I've already contacted all of those troops who were winners, letting them know that, but we're getting it custom made, so it's gonna take a little while. And here are the buy five, I mean, not the buy five, the cookie share booth contest winners. So we have, this is troop 30090. Then we have troop 71146. <laughs> we have troop 70913. I love the little antlers. And then we have troop 80308. And then we have troop 30034. So congratulations, ladies. Okay, so when it comes to the Girl Scout Cookie Rally, this is just some stats I like to share. So in 2017, we had 22 service units that held a cookie rally, and this year we had 19 service units who held a cookie rally. And these numbers are based on who requested cookie rally patches and our rally prizes. Okay, so when it comes to cookie booth rentals from service centers, um, I think that this year it went awesome because I actually had Cindy from East Brunswick, then I had Kathy and Cherry Hill and Don and Abe Harbor run the cookie costumes, so it just made it easier and the costumes were already at the service center. So um, just let me, if you guys have any feedback on that, I feel like it went well. Another thing that I found interesting is that people really like borrowing the roller band. And so I was kind of shocked when I saw that because I was like, oh, do we need to do that next year? But that's definitely something that we could still continue. Okay, I'll switch it over to Angela. Okay, now we're going to talk about smart cookies a little bit. Well, I don't know if any of you tried the new Smart Cookies Direct Ship, but this year it was a absolute smash with room to grow. When you look at the results from 2017 to 2018, what you'll be able to see is in 2017, 419 girls sent out emails versus 1,354 girls sending out emails this year. And look at the difference in the cases that were ordered. This year, 2,236 cases were ordered, which totaled $117,000 in sales compared to 18,000 last year. So that's an $89,000 increase. So when you think about the number of girls that actually went in the system and did something, and you compare that to the number of girls that had the opportunity to do that, that means that we're missing out on an opportunity of over 10,000 girls that could have taken part in sending and shipping out 
um, cookies directly to their customers. We definitely know that, you know, on a council level, we decided to subsidize the shipping costs. So we think that had a huge impact in people at least trying the system. So what we'll be looking towards for next year is how to communicate the message in terms of the shipping better to our volunteers and to our parents, but also how do we educate and communicate and, and really train girls and parents to go online, register, and use this as a tool to make their um, deliveries of cookies or shipping to friends and family in different places a lot easier. This year, we were proud to kind of get new partners. Um, Joanne Fabric, Dunkin' Donuts, Lord & Taylor's Beneficial Bank were new partners this year, primarily through initiatives created through GSUSA partnerships, but for our area and our footprint, it definitely benefited our council well. Um, if any of you have feedback in terms of how those partnerships worked, how well it worked for you on a service unit um, basis, please share that information. Um, I'm not sure if all of these partners will be in partnerships will be in place for next year, but I do think that you know it's something that on a national level they will try to continue. In terms of the smart cookie booth locator, 21 service units uploaded booths into smart cookies. Now, when we really look at the number of service units we have, which is about 58, 57, 57, that's a pretty small number. So I definitely would like to know and receive a little feedback from you guys in terms of why more people may not be using um, the booth locations or, or the, the, the tool, the cookie booth locator tool within Smart Cookies. Um, 201 booth locations were uploaded into Smart Cookies and 2,800 time slots for booths were uploaded. I do know there was a lot of confusion about how to use the tool, especially earlier in the sale. Um, you know, just like you guys were trying to understand it, so were we trying to learn it, you know, with something new but hopefully we could do a better job next year and if you can provide specific feedback we can make sure we have that for next year's training okay so um before we continue we have another poll so don't worry if you don't see it i will um i will repeat myself so you guys can um, answer the question in the chat box but i'm going to launch the poll right now so why did only 21 service units upload booths into smart cookies? So I wanted to know if it you didn't do it because it wasn't a requirement. Um, the instructions were too difficult to follow. Um, we did not have, you did not have the proper permission to do a lottery, or there were just errors and frustrations doing the upload. So I'll just give a couple seconds, and then once I get the results, I will repeat everything again, and you can write your answer in the chat box if you don't see the poll. So just give me, I'll give them like 20 more seconds to answer. Yeah. Okay, and I'll just give a couple more seconds for some more people to answer. Okay, so I'm just going to end the poll, and I'm just going to share the results. So 63% of the people said they didn't do the smart cookies upload because it's not a requirement. 
Um, 13% of the people said the instructions were too difficult to follow. We had 13% of the people said they did not have the proper permission to do a lottery. And then 25% of the people said they had frustrations with doing the upload. So um, I see that Lori said she couldn't figure out how to do the upload. Randy, my booth coordinator wanted nothing to do with the computer. Okay. Anybody else have any other reasons why um, your service unit didn't upload booths in the smart cookies? And the reason this is important is because customers are tech savvy just like you guys and they want to know where to get cookies from. And that's where when um, like when people drop by even East Brunswick office, we tell them to download the app so they can know where to go to a cookie booth. So we want you guys to do it so people know where you guys are. So that's why we feel that it's really important. Um, okay, so Amy said my booth coordinators were still adding booth locations throughout the sale. Okay. Couldn't figure out where the errors were. Yeah, because I know in the beginning, the people were getting errors with uploading the booth. So I know that kind of became frustrating with some people. So, okay. Okay, we didn't want to post locations if there weren't really going to be booths there. Okay. And I believe there's a, if you like, let's say you did have a booth in there and then you found out that someone wasn't going to be there. I think the turnaround time isn't that long, right, Kathy? Is it like a couple minutes or mm -hmm. something? So I know, I think people- You can delete it. Yeah, you can delete it too, just so that you guys know. So you can delete it. Let's say you know 10 minutes beforehand someone's not coming, you can delete it off of Smart Cookies, but I do know that you're, you guys are busy too, so you might you might not even think about that. Okay, so Amy says big shout out to my booth coordinators for great communication with neighboring service unit coordinators during the cell to notify them of open spots our troops didn't fill. Lots of teamwork with other service units this year. So I'm really happy to hear that because that you guys are communicating with each other. I'm so excited. So thank you, Amy, for that. Um, did we get training on how to use the booth locator? No, we didn't really. So, and that's one thing we are going to talk about because we know Smart Cookies, it was like Snap, but obviously there are differences. It's a brand new system. So, and we know we didn't have enough turnaround time to really train everyone in depth. So, we are going to work on that for the future. Okay. So, I'm going to stop sharing the results. And then move on. Okay. So now we really get to talk about the training. Um, one of the things that we totally acknowledge is that, you know, when it comes to working with the new system, pretty much, you know, us on a council level are learning it with you. It's not like we are light years ahead of you and 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 knowing all of the intricacies of the system. So obviously getting feedback from everyone and hearing, you know, fielding phone calls and hearing people's questions really lets us know that there's a need for more in-depth training, especially when it comes to the system and how it works specifically. So one of the things um, that jumped out at us was, you know, there obviously needs to be more training for cookie booth uploads. Um, we had a lot of questions about permissions and, and questions where on a service unit level, maybe you guys didn't understand there were some things that you really could do and had control over, but really wasn't familiar with the permissions. And we didn't tell you, you know, this is what, you know, this permission will give you the ability to do X, Y, or Z. So we think that that's something we need to do a better job of articulating and letting you guys know all the things that you can do on a service unit level to help your troops out during the sale. And um, we definitely know we received a lot of calls for deleting and editing troop transactions in Smart Cookies. I think, you know, a lot was going on where maybe a troop would put in a transaction, realize that they made a mistake 
try to correct it, mess it up, couldn't delete it, et cetera, et cetera. So we think that's something we need to highlight. Is there anything else you could think of that's not represented here that you guys would like to see in terms of a service unit training? And it doesn't necessarily, you know, I, I guess if it's, you know, we know there's smart cookie training needed, but if there's other things that you think are necessary, feel free to add it in the chat box. So um, let me go back up. So Andy says um, maybe a council-wide spreadsheet to use for uploads and lottery, since it's all the same info. Um, Patty said that she would love that so that she doesn't have to bother us. Um, then Stephanie says, why can't the computer training for smart cookies be for all cookie managers instead of just for service unit cookie managers? The way each troop manager can hop on the webinar for better training. So basically it will have to be a separate training then because you guys have different permissions than the troops, but okay. And then yes, cookie managers definitely need training. So my question is with that, do you mean that you want because when it comes like we train okay yeah like we train the service units but you guys train the troops so do you want us to create more like a training for you guys is that it because that's what the service units do for the troops so let's go to the next slide for troop training so we identified a few things that we thought um, could help the process a little better. So again, thinking of all the calls that we received from customer care or calls from troop leaders or cookie moms, one of the things that we thought was a big gap is number one, troops not updating their information in my GS, so therefore incorrect information was uploaded into the cookie system and troops not understanding that they have the ability to edit the information, their, their troop information. So I think that's one thing that perhaps is a disconnect that the information that's in Salesforce that talks about how many girls they have in their troop, what their level, their troop level is and all that information, all that's doing is being uploaded into smart cookies. So if the information is wrong in Salesforce, it's going to be wrong in smart cookies. The other thing that struck out was even though the links to the system were sent probably, we probably triggered it about at least two to three times throughout the sale, there were a lot of leaders or cookie managers that never logged in to register. And I don't know if the link was going into their spam. You know, I, I don't know what the issue was, but a lot of people did not even register, which would give them access to engaging the girls in their troop with dashboards and communicating to the girls in their troop. So there was a lot of misfunctionality by the fact that the volunteers didn't even log in. Um, in terms of troop transfers, again, that's more of the issue of, I think people were trying to self-correct and kind of created a mess for themselves, which made it hard for them to follow the actual sales of girls and making mistakes. And unfortunately, if they didn't keep a running spreadsheet or something separate, it was very difficult for our niece and I to identify where their error was or help them along in that process. Um, what would be beneficial, like if you guys know that you have a permission to delete a transaction and a troop knows that they made an error, then you could just delete that transaction right off the bat earlier in the sale so that they don't get confused or lose track of what the actual girl sales are. And as I mentioned before, the re-triggering of registration notifications, even to parents, you know, how to communicate to them that here's an email that gets you in the system that you could do really cool things with your girls. 
So if there's any other information, feel free. I know people have been typing, but feel free to highlight or lift up things that you think would be beneficial for troop training or help, you know, help make it easier. Okay. So, um, hold on. I just want to read some of the suggestions. So one from, hold on, let me go up a little. Okay. So Peggy says, knowing how to fix typos and girl records is where we had troubles. It will be nice to see on the dashboard which exact cookie boxes were booth cookies or which were individual cells by girls. So I don't know if Smart Cookies is doing that, but we can just give them that suggestion. Um, okay, so let's see. Before a troop is permitted to submit an initial cookie order, please ensure they have two leaders, active bank accounts with checks in hand to pay invoices, and updated girl roster. That was from Amy. Um, so Peggy said, my troop had minus 12 shortbread cookies for weeks. Every transaction I looked at was right, but I couldn't see the source of the bizarre math. Okay. Hmm. Let's see. Um, Boost cell input. Got a lot of complaints about how they were input this year. So we get that complaint all the time. Like people either want the complaint to be by total number or by variety. So it's changed to variety, and that's just how it's going to stay. Um, if you don't want to do it by variety, you could put all the cookies under thanks a lot. So we find a lot of people complain like, oh, well, we want to do it by variety. So now it's variety. So that's how it's going to stay for now. And that's the way we're going to go with it. But you can just put it in thanks a lot. But I always tell people, too, you need to keep a spreadsheet. And I think you, I really would like you guys to stress that to your troops because some troops will call us with difficulties with their inventory. But I'm like, well, send me your spreadsheet. They don't have a spreadsheet. They're just relying just on the system. And I get that you want to be confident in the system, but I feel like you should always have backup. So please tell them to keep their spreadsheets because then it's easier for you to see to help them and for us to see and to be able to understand. Because that's when a lot of things get messy and you guys can't see where things are going wrong because they don't have anything to back it up. Um, Stephanie, can it go back to just having cookie booth totals insert? No, yeah, like I said, we're just doing the varieties now. Um, when I upload it and put the troop number in, the leader and co-leader got an email anyway to just email leader only. I don't, I'm trying to think. I don't know. I'm trying to think if you can. I think you might be able to do that by just making one person active, but we'll have to look into that for next year. Booth expressions to managers. Yeah, um, let's see. So let's see. Karen Bennett says. Um, bring back the spreadsheet from years ago that kept track of cookies, cookies, cookie girl, cookie tracker. You just mm -hmm. used to have a spreadsheet called cookie. I remember. Okay. That. I've yeah. been using it for 10 years. Okay. I remember that. Okay. Mention the need of a spreadsheet at the fall cookie manager training. Okay. Okay. I mean, I just say it's to me, you could, they can use the cookie receipts, that's fine. But to me, it just makes more sense, especially when you have troops who are new or who, you know, the troops that always have errors every year. Like, you know, you're good troops and you know, your troops who need a little bit more help. So I always, to me, a spreadsheet makes sense, but obviously it's up to them. But if we are helping them, it just takes a lot longer for us to do that. Okay, so let's move on to the next slide. And we'll talk about parent training. So in terms of parent training, you know, the only things that I could think of was the whole registering for the system piece of the process and why so many girls 
never registered to the system or set up their dashboard, which directly impacts their ability to use some of the um, online sales portals, but also to track their sale. The, you know, the new iteration of smart cookies is really a lot more interactive, I think, for girls. So it would be nice to be able to communicate or have parents be able to see the functionality and how it can engage the girl. Um, so that's something going forward we would be trying to problem solve for, like what's a better way to reach out to parents and communicate with them about what the system can do and whether that's reaching out directly to them and not trying to go through a troop leader to communicate and train and teach, you know, that might be an option for us in the future. So if you could think of anything that, you know, would be helpful on a council level to support educating parents on, please feel free to share that also. Okay, so let's see. Peggy says to have a training for the troop cookie managers, we actually need to have at least one fake troop per service unit so we can demonstrate the system. So for training, okay. 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 Thank you. What's the other one? Something else popped up. So let's see, Amy said, could council provide computer access to the service centers? for service units to host girl parent online cookie kickoff for families to attend and sign up the girl online. So oh, that's, that's nice. cool, yeah. And learn how yeah. to use the system. I that's like that's our hot Wi-Fi and stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah, oh, yeah, I think that's, that's a good idea. idea. That is definitely a good idea. Thank you, Amy. Why didn't we think of that, Amy? Dig! Yeah, that would be cool, <laughs> definitely, for next year to kick it off. <laughs> okay, so now I will hand it off to Kathy. Um, good evening, everyone. It's a beautiful day today in New Jersey, so I hope you got some of the sun. Mm -hmm. I know you've had enough snow. Before I left Pittsburgh Sunday, I actually put my shovel away, so I hope it's good. Um, I wanted to, before I go on to my slides, just discuss a few things I heard. Didn't know if I should pop in during that time, but I'm going to mention them now. First of all, the lottery. Um, the lottery for Smart Cookies and the, the booth lottery is for council-wide lottery. It does not do service unit lotteries. And so far, I don't think you want to have council-wide lotteries. That's where somebody that lives in Cape May can say, hey, I want to win a slot for a booth that's all the way up in East Brunswick. So we haven't gone there yet. You can do your own booth lotteries and then upload them. I will say honestly, it was new to not only you, to your council, um, our niece and Angela, but it was all new to me. We all jumped on in October and that's pretty behind time for getting up and ready. So I think having lived a year through Smart Cookies, everything will be better. We will be better prepared. I think what we did was kept the boost in there and so when you upload it it caused a problem we'll discuss it more with angela and our niece but i think we're thinking of just let's wipe out all those boosts and let's help you better with the booth upload we want you to put them in smart cookies we get calls all the time where can i find girl scout cookies and if we don't know where the person lives we just tell them to go to gsusa's booth locator it's not ours it's theirs and put in their zip code and they can find booths close to them. So hopefully that will be what we do in the future. As far as troops training, I will say we had tons of things on the YouTube channel that covered every little piece of what troops do. And I know our niece would send them out in the um, app. So I think if we have more of the troops using the app, it'll help direct them. And girl registration, you know, that was new too. And we did have a small amount of girls register, but compared to last year, we had more girls that participated in Smart Cookies than in Coco. So we had more girls get in there. And we had more packages sold for direct ship than ever before. So it showed us the small amount of girls that registered did phenomenally well. 
and I have ideas to share with Angela and our niece of how to get more girls registered early. So we had a first year and we can do everything better. What was that, the likelihood of service unit permissions? What does that say? For, um, she says, what is the likelihood of service unit permissions next year for a lottery? We have over 400 booths, so it will be very helpful. No, I, I, I don't want to lie to you. The lottery is based on a council-wide one, not service unit. I know we've been asked that before. I don't know of any of the enhancements for next year, but if that happens, we'll let you know. But otherwise, no, it's the lottery you would have to do on your own. Let's let's ask a question. Okay. So given the fact that Cassie explained to you how the lottery works, which is all of you guys, ladies, excuse me, put in your cookie booth into Smart Cookie. Are you comfortable with the idea that troops outside of your service unit can sign up for your booth? No, I'm no, seeing a bunch no. of no's. Let's see. No, 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 no. Is that everybody? No. It's hard enough. It's hard enough. <laughs> Okay, well, that looks like what's that? As long That's, as if they're the leftover one. Are we disappointed? <laughs> yes. I would because really like that's it. not going to happen. My God. We have councils that do use the lottery. Um, across the river, I'll give you an example. They do the lottery, they use it for their SEPTA station. So, any girl living anywhere, if she wants to, if she lives in Allentown, PA, and wants to have a SEPTA booth downtown in Philadelphia, she's allowed to enter. But they don't have every booth up for lottery. They do keep some booths that are just in their service unit. So when you do a lottery, it means no matter where you live, you can enter for a chance to win that booth. It makes sense that if that booth is two hours away, you won't enter. But it doesn't mean every single booth you have to offer will be part of the lottery. It's only high traffic places that more than one service unit may be a customer of, say a Walmart that's in the middle of four service units. So it's something we can discuss. So, I mean, I, don't, I can't see all the responses this fast, but it looks like a lot of people said yeah, no. no. They don't like traveling five minutes. <laughs> so that was kind of our, our thought. I know a lot of people did call us to ask about the lottery and our concern was when when you open it up, it's hard to close it down and what are the impacts for everybody else. We know that we have cookie booth coordinators in every service unit who works very hard to coordinate cookie booths for their troops and thought that having this lottery type system would probably cause more problems than anything good that could come out of it. So let's see, should we move on or do you want to answer some more questions? No, I think we're good. I don't want to commit okay. to a service unit lottery because I don't know of any in the plan. If there are, we'll, we'll let you know. But for right now, there's just not a plan for that. Okay. So I want to talk about the cookie lineup this year. Um, these eight favorites are back. I know that s'mores did not do as well as they did their premier year, but yet we've transferred 10% of the cookies ordered to troops. If troops had cookies left over, maybe then s'mores did 8 to 9% of the total sale. If you remember when we went away from citrus, um, cranberry citrus, they were at 2 to 3%. So, S'mores is still a great seller. It's still a good cookie. A lot of people went back to their tried and true favorites. So we saw a boost in caramel, patties, and mints. But we also saw, saw for most councils, the emergence back of lemonade. So I don't think S'mores will take the 10% like lemonade does overall. But we still have a great lineup, and they're back again this year. But we do have something new and exciting, and that is a new gluten-free cookie. It's new caramel chocolate chips. 
and it's coming in 2019. It is a rich caramel with semi-sweet chocolate chips and a hint of sea salt and a chewy gluten-free cookie. What it doesn't have is peanuts. It is made in a totally peanut-free facility. Unlike our cookies, we make shortbreads, we clean the line, we get rid of as much peanut as we can, but if you have a highly, highly sensitive peanut allergy, we put a warning, you know, shortbreads is made on the same oven that makes um, a peanut item. But we are purchasing this cookie from a facility that has no peanuts inside. There is no correlation between peanut allergies and celiacs, but people just told us not only do they not want wheat, they don't want the peanut. I haven't tasted it yet. We're not going to get samples till May, but we're pretty excited because of the taste testers, 85% of them had no idea it was for gluten-free diets and they would purchase the cookie. So we always like some excitement in the new ordering. And for 2019, we have a great new theme. I'm calling it the three I's, inspire, imagine, innovate. And that's what we want future leaders who participate in Girl Scouting to be able to do, to inspire their friends and family, to imagine of great things coming in the future and to be innovative. That is a narwhal, not a unicorn. That is the mascot this year. And now I'm seeing narwhals everywhere. So think of narwhals and rainbows for next year. And in August, we'll be sending the council a link and you can see it on our Facebook page. So I hope you like our Facebook page, but we're gonna ask for girls to name the narwhal. If we go as the way we did in the past, it will be an alliteration. So it will be something that begins with an N. Nia, Natalie, something. So name the narwhal that's coming up. Um, so I had a question, pre-order the gluten-free cookie? Um, we're not sure how that all will be. Um, Angela and our niece will still have to put an early estimate in. But yes, I think that pre-ordering is the way we'll still go. But I don't have my meeting till the end of May, so I don't know all the details yet. So let's talk about the direct ship. I know we had a small amount of your girls that were registered in Smart Cookies actually go on and finish their registration with their parents. 3,834 girls registered. That's 26% of the girls that we uploaded into Smart Cookies. 1,141 of those girls had direct ship orders. So a third of them, maybe even less than that, because you know, you're know you almost up at 4,000. So less than a third of them had actual orders. That's 8% of your girls. But look what they did. They sold 2,236 direct ship cases. That's a 500 77% increase over last year. And 383 more cases were part of your um, taste of home, we used to call it, but your cookie share cookies that we donated to the military. So all this tells me is we have room to grow, room to get better. I have ideas to share with our niece and Angela to get girls to register, some incentives, so I think it can just get better, but you did a great job, so congratulations. Um, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to go back. So someone had a question, will the gluten-free also still be higher price? Mm -hmm. So the $5 price? Yes, it will. Okay, someone said early samples will help with pre-orders, so will they get samples of the cookies? We're going to have some kind of sampling, not for every troop, not like we do with a box per troop. Okay. But hopefully we'll have some to share with service units so you can have at your training. Okay. All right. Okay. Question. So one quick question, it just jumped in my mind. Um, this season, we seem to get quite a few calls from troops who thought cookie share, who called us saying they have cookie share boxes that they wanted to bring to council. And we were trying to figure out, wow, like what's causing a confusion? Is it the, the change in the name from T 
taste of home to mm-hmm. cookie share? Mm-hmm. Is it that locally there's a few, I know there's a few service units who do their kind of own community share program and maybe volunteers are confusing that program okay. with the council program. So for any of you who may have had this experience, can you, you know, maybe help us or shed some light on what the confusion might be? Or is it that they just don't come to your training to know and understand so, the difference? Amy says cookie share and taste of home were confusing to some of her troops. Okay. Ash, what's that? They just don't get, get virtual. virtual. Okay. Okay. Okay, you know. So is it just really, so for Amy, is it just us just trying to drive home the difference of like cookie share versus, you know, a a regular share program? Okay. I'm trying to think of a way to better explain to them. When when they're doing the cookie share, it is virtual. We do use cases of cookies left in the delivery agents warehouses to deliver to Fort Dix. I would say if you have cookies left over that you still have to pay for and would like to donate them, you should donate them locally to a yes. food bank or mm-hmm. somewhere else because virtual cookie share, no one touches a cookie, no one touches right. a variety, but your troop might have eight cases of shortbreads left over, take them to a food bank, transfer shortbreads to the girls so they get credit, but that's not a virtual cookie share. Yeah, I just feel like maybe it is the um, the language that we use. Yeah. We say like a troop that collected um, at least four cases. So maybe if we say the money collected, because I feel okay. like that was such a disconnect for people. And in the past, we used to have to wait for recognition because we did a special imprinted cookie taste of home patch and we decided to use the cookie share patch why should you wait right so maybe we just need to do something better in explaining it okay hold on things are like coming in (sighs) okay so they're saying it's hard to explain that to troops Okay. You know, there was a great YouTube video that I shared with our niece, and I think it explained it well to troops how to place their virtual cookie share orders, and it totally told them these are not cookies you ever touch, right. but the girls get credit. So maybe we just need to train better, and we'll try to do that. Okay. I see something in there about slots. What's that? Yeah, somebody. I don't... Where was it? Is there a reason that we cannot do cookie swaps at the warehouse when there are inventories left at the end of the season? Yeah, I mean, that's basically a safety issue. The warehouses are not permitted to bring more cookies in once they've been delivered. So we'll talk about that at the end next year to see if there's any necessary, but it's really not done with the delivery agents based on their contract with the bakers and GSUSA. And and what we can say that was a little different this year was two things. Number one, having inventory left for the last probably two or three years, we really didn't have excess inventory. No. Nope. So there wouldn't have been an opportunity for you to swap with anything that we have left. Um, this year, looking and knowing, you know, receiving you know, distress calls about the number of s'mores that people had in inventory. We had a concern that number one, if people are left with all of these s'mores, maybe they won't be able to, number one, sell the rest of their cookies and have their true proceeds. Number two, pay the rest of their bill to council. Number three, really just have an an awful cookie experience. So because we had cookies left, We thought of the idea of, you know what, we have a little bit of all varieties left. Why not let people swap out the s'mores and at least get varieties that they can sell? That's not a guarantee every year. No, you can't. At all. You can't swap with a truck either. You know, we have. Well, what troops will always do, though, is swap. Troops would swap with each other. Outside the truck. Yeah. 
but you can't swap with inventory on the on truck the tr because the inventory on the truck is already committed to people picking up the cookies. So we would never, um, we would never uh, negatively impact the requests that are on the truck to swap with people. We never would do that. And we don't have, honestly, the, the manpower to try to differentiate what's a swap versus what people are picking up. It's hard enough for you know two specialists <laughs> to track all of the cookies and the, the, the commitment and the demand for the cookies to make sure the trucks are at the right place at the right time with the right variety. So that's something that just logistically we don't have you know the, the the ability to do plus i will say even though there's years of history myself and i think all of us live the most recent history so not this past season but the 2017 year we couldn't get enough s'mores so we all relive that history troops ordered too many angela and our niece ordered too many and abc baked too many so everybody had buku of s'mores. So next year we'll live the history of this past season and nobody will order enough s'mores and then we'll be hunting them down. So I don't think there will be the same opportunity in the future for a swap. We're gonna watch the inventory better. But remember, I think s'mores still is a good cookie. I think it will sell. It just didn't do what it did its first year. And we have one fall sale left in the country. So we'll see how they do with s'mores as an indicator. And I see your post, Stephanie. Two nightmares, of course. Well, but on, on, in terms of- Two different things. Though. Yeah, like, you know, Not one of the things that we talked about with the s'mores though, in terms of obviously what customers purchase, it was the same percentage, it's the same product mix of the percentage. It's just that we, everyone over ordered in anticipation. So I think that will most likely scale back because now people are like, oh, I had all of those s'mores next year, and we'll have to kind of ride that wave. Um, I think Stephanie asked about more responsiveness from a council, from council next year. Well, hopefully, one of the things to keep in mind is that we didn't have a product program manager all season. Um, Ginger left in November. We did not have an additional product program specialist. So. Our niece, who was a rock star and trying to help everybody as much as she can, um, you know, in, in spite of the fact that we could not be as responsive to everyone, I think we all got through it. Um, one of the things that I want to do is say a special thank you to all of the service unit cookie managers and cookie booth coordinators who really understood, you know, that we were kind of walking with a limp and crutches, but we all got through it and you guys were very patient with us. We appreciate it. And we are most certainly going to fill those roles so that people are on board for next year. Yes, thank you guys and thank you everybody for understanding. Like there were times when I was just so swamped. So I was trying to get back to people as soon as I could. But as you know, like she said, we didn't have a manager or not. We were just trying to get everyone through the sale so that it can be, just get everybody through. So thank you guys. <laughs> Peggy says I owe a big raise. <laughs> thank you, Peggy. Yes, she does, Peggy. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Okay, so we'll move on to Kathy's next slide. I will, but I saw one okay. comment, not to change the subject, but why do we lose truck time at the end of the sale? Um, our contract with delivery agents is that they can't, they're not permitted to take a truck out with less than 150 cases. And towards the end, we just didn't have those. So your council drove to places, did what they could to accommodate. And yes, I agree. GSUSA did a ton of advertising last year and not this year. So, well, I think the difference too, for all of us to remember, is last year, not only was the, it the kickoff of a new cookie, s'mores, but it was the 100th year of Girl Scout selling. So there was a lot of marketing stories pushed out to every national news outlet, you know, across the country. 
and we did not have that this year. So I think that's something that all of us will, you know, look at as a teachable moment. Um, when you look back on the history of our sale, you can see the, the years that we did really well were years that were tied to big events in Girl Scouting, like the 100th year of Girl Scouting was a big sale year for us, like the 100th year of Girl Selling Cookies. So I think those big national stories really do um, have positive impact on our sale. And it's probably because there's just so many stories out there on media outlets. So customers are looking for Girl Scouts. So just something to think about as we move forward. Okay, I want to talk about direct ship and why it was so successful. The first two weeks of the kickoff of your sale, because you're one of the earliest sales, um, a direct sale, the first two weeks we had outdone our whole previous year from Coco Direct. It was phenomenal. What made it that way? Well, first of all, even though some of us found it frustrating to register the girls, the girls that registered really understood. They sent e-cards and they got direct ship um, orders. There were low, lower shipping costs this year. Um, if you ordered one to 12 packages, you play, paid the flat rate of 950. So if you were shipping to Pennsylvania, which is your neighboring state, or you were shipping all the way to Montana, it was 950. And of course, the savvy buyer would order 12 because that was the best deal. New this year was no minimum. So you could order two boxes of Thin Mints and one box of patties. You could order three boxes of lemonades. You wouldn't have to order six of them. So that really helped a lot. Plus the cookie share part, the donated part, people only had to order one package if they wanted to. They had to pay a 125 processing fee, but no shipping fee because they were virtual. The part we don't all understand, but they were virtual. Um, so the supporting of donation. Also, what really helped was your council paid half those shipping costs. So if you had a customer order four or more packages up to 12, it cost only 475. So thank your council. They subsidized that and they helped the sales grow. What we have coming up new is a gift pack option. I don't know completely all the details, but the customer can decide to send a gift box to friends or family member. And if they know they only like chocolate, they could put a caramel delight, a peanut butter patty, a thin mint. They could make it a chocolate gift pack for somebody's birthday. Your sale is happening during Valentine's Day, so they could wish somebody a happy Valentine's Day. So that's new this year. So we think it will be exciting and something new. And definitely for training, we'll have more details for everyone. All right, so I'm going to take over and we're going to talk about recognition. So I believe Christina asked the questions about the shipment of recognition. So I just kind of broke it down so you guys can know um, where the recognitions will be coming from. So the recognitions that are be coming from ABC Baker are the recognitions up to the 600 to 699 level. Um, you'll be getting the cookie share patches directly from ABC Baker, the 10% incentive tote bags. So um, we talked to the baker today and they said the, the delivery should be during the week of May 14th. It may be earlier. If it is, I will let you know, but just put on your calendars the no week later. of May. But it won't be any later than that. But just put on your calendars the week of May 14th and I will also be sending out an email with that information. Um, things that will be coming directly from council to the Girl Scout. So the DigiGirl medallion will be mailed directly to the girl. Um, the recognitions from the 700 level to the 2500 level directly to the girl. And then the top seller giant elephant. Along with the, um, well, obviously the recognition level with the trophy and certificate and pen. Okay. So when it when you get your package from ABC Baker and after you have counted everything and compared it to the packing list, if you are short anything, I will be sending out um, a link so that you can fill out a form for items that you are missing. So I will email you that form 
and um, you will be able to let me know if anything that you are missing from ABC Baker. Um, I believe I also added on this paper about the cookie share patch. So I will be sending you a spreadsheet of which troops earn a cookie share patch in the 10% incentive tote bag. As you know, this wasn't on your recognition order in Smart Cookies. Um, we had to manually do those calculations. So I will send you a spreadsheet on who um, will earn those items. And then also, I know years before we didn't use a form, but this just makes it so much easier than going through emails and getting things mixed up. So the form works very well. Okay, so the GSC SNJ Cookies app. I love this app this year. I feel like every year it gets better with you guys communicating on it. And just, I really want to thank you guys for helping um, out other troops and helping other service units. Like, you guys are so awesome with that. It's like, if I send out an email or I talk to somebody, they're like, well, our niece said this. So it just helps get the information out there. Um, and this year, we also seen an increase in users. So last year, we had 1,227 users, and this year was 1,599 users. So thank you guys for that, because that's all because of you guys. Just keep spreading the word about it. Like, it helps so much you guys, too, because then troops aren't always contacting you guys. They're on the app talking to each other or reaching out or other service unit. Um, cookie managers will see it and help them. So thank you guys so much. <laughs> Okay, so now we have it open for any more questions anybody would like to ask. Should we go to the last? Yeah, one? let me see. Is there a way troop cookie managers could submit their initial troop orders via team mm. app? It would force all troop managers to create oh. an account and mm. sign in. No, we don't. It's not a way for us to link the team app and smart cookies because they're two totally different platforms like one is run by ibm and the other one is team app is totally different um had complaints about smart cookies app for the cookie managers now the app is only the they have the app but it's only for girls right we have yeah. smart cookie app is only for girls so a troop volunteer or service unit volunteer your credentials won't work. The girl has her own pass login and password she creates. It's not connected to an email address. So the app is only for girls. We did not create a volunteer app for Smart Cookies because actually IBM tells us that's kind of passe to have an app. Everything that you can do in Smart Cookies on your PC, you can do on your phone and your iPad or your Android. So you can do all the functions actually by just logging in to www.smartcookies.com and using your email address and your login. Okay, um, I see a question from Randy. I just scrolled up. Was the 10% increase just for the initial order? No, the 10% increase was from Overall sales from last year, if you were a new troop, is if you sold at least 70 cases. So let's see. Um, is there a new question? Could we buy any miracle go back to straight across, not down, mm -hmm. on inputting info and alphabetize girls? I don't understand. Yeah, we don't understand. You say the girls, you want an alpha order in your troop roster? Um, let's see. Oh, I see Amy's. So what did Amy say? I know the bottom line is sales, but it would be nice if the five is such a skills were more at the forefront. The cookies sell themselves, but what the girls gain from the five skills are fantastic. It also takes the focus off the sales and puts it on learning and skill development. This might take the competitive edge off the pairs. I agree. Yes, we agree. We want people to do that too. So, I mean, I definitely think that this coming year, there's more of a focus on 
you know, the four pillars and, and really talking about the entrepreneurial um, experience. So I do think that we, you know, from when we train you guys as service units, we really train about the operational stuff. We talk about the program, but the nuts and bolts of the training is really about the operational piece. And I do think that we could perhaps do more in terms of trying to either communicate directly to parents about what the program really is all about, not just the operational piece, which is probably more of what they get from the troop leader. You need to do this on this day, need to do X, Y, and Z. This is, I need your orders by this day and not really focused on the program. So I do think that was a good comment, Amy. Thank you. Um, Christina asks, are cookie prizes available for leaders to purchase? t-shirts and sweatshirts. So no, we don't do that because that takes it away from a girl earning the actual reward if people can just buy it. So it's not as fulfilling as people being able to um, earn that reward. Um, Peggy, you mean for girls? For the leaders, so that the leaders can... With, here's a question. Would having some type of wearable incentive be a good uh, motivator <laughs> for adults, for the adults, for the troop leaders. I hear from my counterparts in service unit support that the, I think the t-shirts um, that are being offered for early bird was received with um, very positive responses from the service unit managers and things like that. Um, so, someone says, what kind of petition is needed to push the cell back to avoid cookie booths in 12 degree weather? Push it back to when? I guess in not cold weather, maybe? I don't know. If I'm not mistaken. It's cold in April. <laughs> yeah, if I'm not mistaken. Over 90 something percent of all the councils in the country. There's only one sell council between, so far. Okay, so between the January and March. So chances are that will not happen. Um, the sale will stay somewhere around this framework and primarily for us to take advantage of any collateral marketing pushes that GSUSA does. So this council who so the only council that sells in the fall, the girls would not be able to participate in the Cookie Pro contest and things like that. GSUSA does not run their promotional type things year round. It's only during what they believe are cookie sales for the majority of councils, which is January through about April. Okay, um, a good suggestion from Amy Bruno. So maybe reward troops slash girls for earning cookie pen and financial literacy badges instead of booth decor. Mm -hmm. So that's a great idea. I didn't think of that before. Um, Go Amy, you're cooking. Thank you, good idea. Okay, so Kim says, I have an issue with getting current certificates of insurance. They auto come in some locations we haven't used in years. I have never heard about service unit update the certificates <laughs> of insurance for booth locations. The certificates of insurance from Donna Hoffman? Yeah, they come. So I think at the beginning of the year, I believe that the um, the certificates, like it auto is- It's supposed to be automatic. Yeah, they generated. automatically. So typically, and I think Colleen could back me up on this. Typically, she will request maybe before January a certificate of insurance, knowing that once the new year comes, a new certificate will be generated for like the 2018 year. Okay, um, Kelly from Monroe Franklin says, it should be a simple switch for IBM because the pull down menus for cookie transactions and financial transactions match. Example, both use first name, last name, then date, then data, et cetera. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll take your suggestion, Kelly. I don't know. 
sometimes the money is spent, but I will offer your suggestions. Okay. She's saying that the girl's in the same order. Oh, I saw okay. It would drive me crazy too. Okay. Um, I see Amy saying that seven weeks is too long for the sale. Well, I mean, troops can decide to stop selling cookies. We just have that time frame just in case for when there's inclement weather and people can um, sell a certain cookie booth that they have more time to sell. So troops can decide their length on when they want to sell their cookies during a cookie sale. I'm just curious, when, Amy, what you mean by customers were burned out? The people that purchased the cookies? Because usually they're still willing to buy cookies for weeks after. They even bug us, where can I get cookies? Okay, someone says the last deposit was due the day before paperwork. Too hectic. Closing. Um, trying to see what else. I mean, from what I could tell, a lot of troops did make that last deposit. I think, um, you know, there were definitely troops that, you know, had some struggles and they were encouraged to number one fill out the what is it the um, excess boxes form and contact missy in um our uh who is our finance associate to really kind of discuss you know what was going on with them okay um so when Angela said, would people be interested in getting like a leader t-shirt, sweatshirt incentive? Mm -hmm. A lot of people saying they would like it. Okay. They like that. So we could think of some good ideas for next year. Um, okay. So someone said maybe instead of offering leaders the bag as 10% incentive, do the t-shirt. I know we did that like, what was it, three years mm -hmm. ago? I can't remember. Mm -hmm. It was my first year here. I know we had did it with the polar bear on it. Um, trying to think what else. Just trying to scroll through. There was a lot of um. Okay. Uh, let's see. Okay, Amy, I understand you meant customers. Okay. Okay, hold on. So Colleen says, can we please address mine and Kathy's issues about troops just selling without permission? I plan on attending the May SUM meeting to address as many SUM as possible about other areas coming to our busy places after the sale has ended. Oh, so the PATCO issue. Yeah, I have PATCO? Yeah, it was an issue where um, troops were selling at PATCO, not during the um, the agreed time. So they were going outside of their time. So um, our contract. Is yeah, fine. exactly. Okay. So I sent out a, I got an email from Lori and um, what's her name? Alex, what's her name from um, Cherry Hill? Alex. I forget her name, the SUM from Cherry Hill. So oh, she sent um, me an email because that was an issue. Ann Alexander. Yes, that's what, Ann Alexander, because that was an issue. So I sent that out to service units. And it's funny because uh, some troops even asked me, like, what's PACO? So I knew everyone sent it out, but people mm -hmm. who weren't really associated with it right. knew about it. So, yes, that was an issue. And I mean, I do think that's something that, like you said, at the SUM symposium, you know, I'll say on a yearly basis, new troops are rotating in and out of this council. And I think the ability to uh, fall in line with the operational um, things that have to happen in every service unit, you know, on a council level, we're thinking, okay, well, you guys are, you know, communicating that to your troops. And we know that some service units have stronger training programs for their troops than others, but I do think that it's worth, um, you know, bringing up or expressing so that hopefully, you know, next year we don't have the same type of issues. Because to tell you the truth, I've never even heard, I think this is the first year I've even heard of, you know, that kind of problem at PASCO. Yeah. So I'm like, wow. Yeah. So I was like, oh, let me get this out. Oh, yeah. Got the okay. information out. Um, how did the Dunkin' Donuts locations get chosen? 
Ours knew nothing about it, and we have three in our service unit what could have been used for booze. Every Dunkin' Donuts was not part of the list. GSUSA sent us the list. And I don't know how they came up with the list. I'm assuming that somehow on a national level, um, actually, I did receive a call from a store manager who called me to say she thought she signed up for another weekend and was surprised that troops were showing up in her store. I looked on the spreadsheet and was, tell, was able to tell her exactly which day she did sign up. So she was mistaken and just to get the information correctly. Unfortunately, when it comes to some of these national things, I think similar to when we first got Wawa, you know, people would show up at certain um, sites and that store manager knew nothing about it, even though on a regional level, the higher ups above had, have given us, had given us access to all of those stores. So I do think that what could be a good practice going forward would be, and, and it is asking a lot, but if we push out a list of sites that you have access to, just touch base with those stores or places in advance so that they are aware that, hey, Girl Scouts is coming or there's time for them to make a phone call or ask as opposed to now potentially getting to some kind of confrontation or issue with troops showing up, store managers not knowing, you know, that they should even be there and, and hopefully we could avoid any issues. But it, it is a good practice to communicate before troops just walk in the door. Um, so I see another question was, Debbie asked about the dot sheets. Um, if you guys, cause some people use dot sheets during their own deliveries, they like to use them. So, I mean, if you want copies, I can make copies for you. Like, we or we have some extra, we get tons of them. So, just ask me for them, or I'll just make copies of actual dot sheets for you. So, put in that request. I believe, Suzanne, I think I sent, I think I just printed yours. I can't remember. I think I sent you the copies. I can't remember. But you definitely can um, reach out to us, and, yeah, we have them, or I'll make copies, color copies for you, so you don't have to worry about that. Okay, anybody have any other questions? Because we have like two minutes till nine, so I respect everyone's time. I don't want it to go overboard. Um, let's see. Let's, Amy says, at least twice this season, girls in our troops and my service unit were slandered on social media with unfounded and unfair accusations about cell practices. It really upset some of my troops. Um, if this is not clear, there. Please don't post it on social media. Well, you know what? That's a good point because I will say that I think I still did calls about different types of things, especially in terms of how troops were using social media. Um, in, in this world and in this day and climate, I think we may have to give reminders for people about, you know, their role in representing Girl Scouts and what they may say on social media that really displays a, a negative, um, just negativity. I don't think we want that as an organization. We want to be a little uh, higher than that, especially to our customers and you know, regular people. I think our brand is a brand that is respected, and we really want to work hard to try not to tarnish that to the general public. So maybe that's part of our training too, just in terms of some, you know, guidelines and, and how we use social media to promote Girl Scouts, not tear each other down. Yeah. Um, and then there was a question about think of said transfer forms. We have a ton, ton of transfer slips. So if anytime you need anything, like you can just reach out to us. Um, I could send them to a service center. I'll even mail them to you so you can have them. Like we get so many <laughs> returns to us at the end of the sale because a lot of service units don't use them up. So always reach out to us for that. 
Okay. Um, be at every booth sale. Oh, uh, okay. For every it helps for a leader to be at every booth sale, but they're saying it's a really huge commitment for yeah. the leaders. Yeah. No, and we don't want people to get burnt out. That's why, if anything, one of the things that we should promote very well for people that are working on booths or at booths or handling money is have the different support people, whether it's parents, whether it's, you know, just other adults, have them registered as troop support volunteers so that they can be at cookie booths and chaperone and help out so that leaders don't get burnt out or cookie managers, I mean, troop cookie moms don't get burnt out. The more people that are there to support the girls in this experience, you know, the less load for any one person. Okay. So if there's not any other questions, we will wrap it up. Thank you, everyone. Yes, thank thank you. you. And thank you so much for you guys being active in the um, conversation that we're having today. Yes. Like, it really helps us a lot. We wanted to get you guys feedback. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Um, just to let you guys know, I will send out the recorded webinar next week and also with the slides so you can share them with your, um, with your troops. So have a great night, everyone. Good night. Good night.